that can shift your focus because in reality, a lot of times when we get discouraged, when we get disillusioned, we get angry. It's really because we focused on ourselves, how that affected us. And so it helps us to turn outward and actually upward toward the Lord. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, send me, Lord. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. Welcome to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast, a podcast designed to equip, encourage, and challenge you in pro life ministry and always with a focus on the gospel. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, I've touched your heart. Use me, Lord, use me, Lord. Welcome back to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast. Appreciate you guys joining us. And as always, I'm joined by Vicki Kassiorg. Hey, everyone. Hello, Vicki. And uh, my name is Daniel Parks. Hopefully, as you guys know, maybe this is the first episode that you've listened to of the Gospel Centered Prayer Life podcast. Welcome. We appreciate you being with us. And I believe this will actually be our last episode of 2022. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Pretty amazing. We've done a podcast episode every week for the entire 2022, 2020, mm-hmm. 2019. I think we started in 2018. We've been doing this that many For a while. years. Yep. And I am just now getting the name of this yeah, podcast. Yeah, you're getting it. You're getting it. And I'm looking forward to what we're going to do in 2023. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of stuff. These episodes kind of come out of situations that we encounter on the sidewalk or questions that we get asked and things like that. And I'm sure there's some stuff, uh, God knows, but we don't, that's going to happen in 2023 that's going to spur on new episodes. But I do want to encourage you guys that are listening that if you have ideas for podcast episodes that we could do, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to give our email addresses at the end. So please reach out to us along those lines. But we're going to be talking today about what, Vicki? One of my favorite, oh, I don't know. Uh, it's not a favorite subject, but it's something near and dear to me, and that's the serenity prayer. Okay. So I've got a little story. Should I tell the story? Uh, Yeah. About why why that matters to me. Yeah, yeah. I was. This is literally probably fifty five years ago. All right. I was. I was pretty little. Okay. Yeah, little, little, little. You're not going to say how little you were. I don't know. I was. I was like, okay, if it's fifty five. Yeah, I was. I was under 10, okay, for sure. And I was wandering through a creek in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. And in Memphis, Tennessee, it's not called a creek, it's called a but, creek. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you're right about that. That really, that was always hard trying to like understand what Southerners were saying because yeah. I was from the North. But anyway, I'm wandering through a, cr- a creek and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I see this thing flashing in the sunlight, this gold thing, and I picked it up. It was a keychain. Okay. Um, and on one side of the keychain, it was an oval and then the part that you attach the keychain. And on one side of the oval was a, an image of praying hands. Okay. And on the other side was the serenity prayer. So well, I know you were, were not familiar with this prayer when I when I first told you about it, I, I mean, don't think. I mean, I've been familiar with it, but it's like having it memorized. And I've yeah. kind of, I guess I've already always kind of seen it in the light of like... Um, Maybe like AA and things like that. Don't people in Alcoholics I don't know. Anonymous I and don't like know. That sort I don't of self help things, don't they encourage you to pray this? I, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, but I don't I think know. that's the context I've heard it in. But I was not a believer. And yet okay. when I picked up that keychain at with that serenity prayer, it was so powerful to me. And I knew that someone was speaking to me. Okay. And I still have that keychain. Wow. I store it in a little um, uh, silver box that my dad gave me. And I know exactly where it is. Every so often I'll pull it out. It is just, it's not like a talisman or, <laughs> or an idol or anything like that. Talisman, isn't that like, like something that like, like brings you good luck, you know that. Okay. It's not uh, like never that heard at that all. Word before, but okay. okay, it's not. It's not an idol. It's nothing like that. So you don't but pray it, to it. No. <laughs> okay. You don't rub it for good luck. No. Okay. No, but it is so precious because it reminds me that even as a very little girl who was raised by parents who didn't 
no God. Yeah. Um, and and I did not believe in God. Even then, he was speaking to me. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and this prayer, I'm going to recite it in a second. I did memorize it. One of the few things that I have memorized in my entire life, in, <laughs> like as you've seen with the name of our podcast, <laughs> right. it only took me four years. Yeah. This I memorized immediately. And um, and I, I still call it to mind when I'm um, in situations where... I need peace. So let me tell you the prayer, and then I'll tell you the recent event, and then we're going to go into how this prayer can actually help, I believe, strongly people on the sidewalk. Okay, cool. Okay, so the the prayer is, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Okay. Amen. Cool. So um, what re- happened recently that I think we can connect now how this prayer, what this has to do with sidewalk counseling. I was training a new counselor uh, just a couple days ago. Maybe it was even yesterday. The days are kind of all <laughs> washing together in all the rain. But I was training her and uh, training her to stop a car, which she did successfully. It was a mom. And I started speaking to the mom because this counselor really is brand new. Okay. Wouldn't have known what to say. And while I was speaking to the mom, and we were definitely making progress, one of the pro-abortion people came running up, as they always do, got between me and the mom, told the mom, we're liars. She, the clinic is just down the street. Just go. Just go. Get yeah. out of the street. Don't listen to us. Just go. And the mom did, yeah. She, as often happens. And the new counselor was very upset. Right. And and she said, so how can we prevent this from happening? Yeah. And the serenity prayer came came to me and and I told her you will be very discouraged as a sidewalk counselor if you focus on the things we have no control over. Yeah. yeah. We cannot control whether they come up and talk to the moms or not. There are things we can do to make it less likely, but we can't control it. Right. But what we can control is we're there, we show up, we speak God's message, whatever. There's a whole list of things that we can control. And so as I was thinking through that interaction yesterday, I talked with her for quite a while because I think this is a key element that helps counselors, sidewalk outreach people to remain on the sidewalk for the long term yeah, or to become discouraged and give up. Yeah, I think yeah. this is a key important thing. Yeah, I think so too. To discuss. Yeah. So what I thought we'd do, because that keychain is precious to me, All right. that message that God was As a matter of fact, you have it me. in your hand right now, rubbing not, it for good luck. I do not no, at kidding. this moment. I know exactly where it is, though. I okay. won't tell anyone in case they try to go take it out All of right. my house. But, um, uh, but anyway, um, the, the first verse of that prayer, God grant me the serenity. Okay, so for me, it's coming from God, first yeah. of all. Okay. It's not coming from me. Serenity means peace. Okay. That God is is giving me peace. And why that is so critical is we are standing there at the abortion center in front of a place where we know in our facility 30 to 90 babies a day yeah, yeah. are going to be slaughtered. Pretty heavy. How do you find peace yeah. in a place like that? Yeah. Yeah. So So now this is biblical. We can find peace in a troubled world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to read a scripture here in a minute that has to do with this in Philippians. Mm -hmm. But just the reality and what the Bible teaches us as a whole, that Jesus Christ is on his throne, Mm -hmm. that no matter what happens inside of that building, Jesus is still Lord. The Bible says that he has been given a name that is above every name Mm -hmm. and that at his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So that's a scriptural reality. I yeah. think that's actually in Philippians as well, Philippians mm-hmm. chapter two. But then the scripture here in Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven, which I think really coincides with the grant me the serenity part yeah. of that prayer. Yeah. Is it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mm-hmm. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
And that's what we're talking about. We need to yes. guard our hearts and minds against delu- disillusionment, mm-hmm. against discouragement, against anger, against uh, carnal, <laughs> explosive rage. Sometimes when you encounter pro-abortion people like that, yeah. when you encounter angry dads that are going in and cussing you out, all you're there is you're just there offering help, right? Yeah. You're saying God loves you and your baby. You're not being provocative or anything, and yet you're still getting cussed. It's easy to get disillusioned and get angry. And like you said, stop going to the sidewalk because of that disillusionment. I believe having this mindset and embracing this scripture to be anxious for nothing, but by everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication. So when you're experiencing those things, release it to the Lord. I've talked about debriefing with Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. When you've had an explosive situation on the sidewalk or a difficult day on your way home in your car, voice it to the Lord by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Like, thank God that he's there with you. That stuff can shift your mind. That can shift your focus. Because in reality, a lot of times when we get discouraged, we get disillusioned, we get angry. It's really because we focused on ourselves, how that affected Mm -hmm. us. And so it helps Mm -hmm. us to turn outward and actually upward toward the Lord. And it does say that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so I, I, Right in line with that, God grant me the serenity, Yeah, is that scripture, Philippians it, 4, 6, and 7. It's perfect because it is a supernatural peace that I feel out there. Yeah. You know, when when I'm in the right mindset, which yeah. I try to be, and, yeah. and honestly, I, I usually am. That's, yeah. that's yeah. why I'm able to be out there for so many years. Yeah, but, another scripture that comes to mind here, which is mm-hmm. a picture uh, that the Lord really gave me some years ago, mm-hmm. and it comes from Psalm 23. Everybody knows Psalm mm-hmm. 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We're literally in the valley of the shadow of death at yeah. the abortion clinic. Yeah. Um, you know, your rod and your staff will come for me, those scriptures. But really the one that really sticks out to me, you make a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. The picture there that the Lord gave me is like a battlefield. I think I've probably shared this before, mm-hmm. but you're in the midst of a battlefield, right? The valley of the shadow of death is a valley of, of a battle that's going on. Swords clanging, arrows flying, chariots and all this stuff, you know, the the battles of those days, what they look like. We have a lot of that in the scripture. We see the picture of that. Um, But in the midst of that, the Lord prepares a table. There's it's like you and Jesus are sitting down and having a meal with the arrows whizzing by and the swords clanging and all that. None of that stuff is affecting you because there you are fellowshipping with the Lord. And I think you can have that sort of fellowship, that sort of peace, that sort of serenity yeah. Even in the midst of the battle that we're in, because, as this scripture says, it will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right. Because you are, you are in a covenant with him. You're his son. You're his daughter. None of that stuff, it, it matters, but none of that stuff has to affect you. You can have peace because you know him, because he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Right. Great, great scripture. And I think that's a great image to keep in our head as we're yeah. out there. So then the second line is to accept the things I cannot change. Like in that interaction with that sidewalk counselor, there are many things we can't change. We can't honestly change that woman's heart yeah. towards right. life or yeah, death. We course. have no control over that. Right. We, we'll do our best. Yeah. We'll say what we're trained to say. We'll, you, we'll call on the Holy Spirit to help us to speak with discernment and yeah. love. But we can't, we can't change if someone's completely alienated and rebelling against God or whether yeah. they're going to turn to him. We can't change the, the huge numbers of so-called pro-choice people that are out there or what they're doing or the noise that they're making. We can't change the, whether the police are going to support us or not or are going to be um, changing the rules every time they see yeah. us. We can't change those things. Right. And if our focus is on those things, we're going to be miserable. Oh, yeah. Be frustrated so, at every turn. We are. So we need – there are some things we have to accept. Yeah. We don't have the power to ev- to to change these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a scripture that came to mind along these lines, and I've, I've touched on this so many times, right? Mm-hmm. Probably <laughs> maybe every – Every episode. Maybe, it must be important. Maybe we, every episode right. I have used this scripture or uh-huh. some form of this scripture. Every training that we do, I right. use this because I just want to drill this into people's heads. Uh-huh. Like you said, there are things we cannot change. We cannot change a human heart. 
Now, we can speak things, we can speak the truth, and we, sh- we need to speak the truth, right? Those are kind of the next phase of things, the things that we can. Right. Um, but the things that we cannot change are human hearts. We cannot change all of the circumstances. And so this scripture always comes to mind for me. Okay. And this is Paul encouraging the church in Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. All we can do is plant seeds and or water seeds. Right. You cannot make that seed grow. That's God's work. When we plant the gospel seeds, we, we plant the truth seeds, or we water seeds that have already been planted. That's all that we can do. We need to be faithful to do that, right? We need to be faithful to plant the seeds of truth. We need to be faithful to water the seeds that have already been planted. But we can't go in and change that heart. Same way, like you talk about the police. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, here in Charlotte, we have some um, some some hostile police officers. Some of our other cities are some police officers. Maybe they're not hostile, but they just don't know what the laws are, and and they might be one sided or another. But at the end of the day, we can't change that. We can't change the way you know my teams in California mm-hmm. can really be frustrated by the state laws and the things that they pass. They just passed, um, I think it was Proposition One. Mm-hmm. where essentially abortion is now a constitutional right yeah. protected under the law of California. Like it's a constitutional right for a mom to kill her child. Yeah. Ultimately applies to her all nine months of pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Devastating. Mm-hmm. But we can't change that. Right? We can go out and we can vote. And many people did. And it can be discouraging. And you wonder, did they, did they taint the election or whatever? Right. Like, I'm not even getting into all of that. At the end of the day, that Proposition 1 passed. Yeah. And you can be frustrated by that. And discouraged by that. But at the end of the day, you can't change that. Yeah. Um, that stuff you have to leave in the hands of the Lord, right? right? You right. have to trust that maybe, and I believe God is actually using that to stir up the church in California. Yeah. That's just one example of many. Yeah. There are things we cannot change, and we need to leave that stuff to the Lord. We do. We need to accept it, like, the, like that verse in the serenity prayer, to just yeah. accept what we cannot change. But then, and I love the next line. Because we shouldn't be passive right. about the things we can change. So the courage to change the things I can. Yeah. So on the sidewalk, and as I counseled and taught this new counselor, well, what what can we change? Yeah. What can we do? Where where can we affect um, God's good purpose? What are the right. things that we can we can do? We can show up in obedience to God. Yeah. Um, we can change whether we have a heart abiding in the Lord. Are we yeah, reading his yeah. word? Are we praying? Are we are we preparing each day with the spiritual armor of God so that we are we yeah, giving yeah. our full selves to the battle? Are we getting enough sleep? Are we going to bed on time? Right. Um, are, are we looking at the calendar and making sure our name is on it so that our teams know that we're going to show up? Are we wearing the proper clothes, looking at the weather ahead of time? so that we know we're dressed appropriately, so that we can spend the full time we're supposed to be out there. Can we speak boldly and courageously? Can we affect change? Yes, we can. We can. Um, We don't need to be timid or fearful as we speak. Um, Can we educate ourselves to better speak the gospel, to better speak about fetal development? Um, Can we encourage our fellow counselors? Yes. Can we receive encouragement from other counselors? Can we put out prayer requests? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we are struggling, we're feeling a heaviness. Can we put that out to our team and let them know, please pray for me? Um, Can we dedicate times of fasting? We can do those things. Those are things that we can. You can't change a human heart, but you can. be more equipped with the word and be more effective with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the word that that verse uses is um, to uh, have the courage to the courage to change the things that we can, because yeah. so often we don't. Right. Like, like when I hear someone who I know God has been working on their heart to be out there on the sidewalk and they say, well, I'll pray for you. Yeah. They are not exhibiting the courage to change what they can do. They can show up. Yeah. It right. does take courage. I get it takes courage. But when we have the capability to change something, God will give us yeah. the courage if we let him yeah. to change what we can change. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Mm. 
the grace of God is not just God's riches at Christ's expense. Some people use that acronym, and it's it's accurate in a sense. Or some people use the grace of God is unmerited favor. And it, that's true as well. Anything we receive from God is unmerited because we deserve hell and judgment. But the grace of God is so much more than just what applies to salvation. The grace of God is the empowerment of God in a person to do what they could not do apart from that power. The grace of God, think of it, you know, we talk about maybe someone dancing, they dance gracefully. What are we saying? We're saying they're dancing seeming from a power that's not their own, right? There's some kind of influence. That's kind of the picture of the grace of God. But the grace, so the grace of God can empower us to do the things that we know we ought to. The grace of God can empower us to get up in the morning and go to the sidewalk. The grace of God can empower us to boldly speak when we don't think we have any strength in ourselves. And so the grace of God, he wants to empower us with his grace. But how do you receive his grace? You do it through humility. God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. What is humility? It's submission to God because it says he resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. Submission to God is just agreement. I agree, God, that I should be out there and I need your grace to help me get out there when I'm whatever, distracted or whenever I'm busy and, 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 and whatever, whatever God's calling us to. We, re- we need grace to carry it through. We need grace to speak boldly. We need grace when we're out on the sidewalk to boldly step out and hand out that literature. How do we receive it? Through humility, simply saying, God, I acknowledge that I need it and I'm asking you for it. And he can give you the grace to do it. Yeah. A, a scripture that comes to mind here as we were going through in preparation for this, we talked about this in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua has a charge from the Lord to go and to lead the children of Israel into the promised land to take that ground for the children of Israel, ultimately for the Lord. And he says here in Joshua 1, 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is Joshua's affirmation from the Lord. Yeah, He'd already had a command. He already knew the charge to go in and take the land, but there's always the potential for fear and discouragement and uh, a lack of courage. And so God is putting courage in Joshua in the same way he wants to put courage in you to do what he's called you to do. Those are the things that you can change, right? Those are the things that you can do. You can't change a human heart, but you can change what you do to be one who waters or plants seeds. That's right. And you can still be afraid. Courage is when you're still afraid, when you're afraid, but you still do it. Yeah, yeah. So, and he will give you, a, I've seen it over and over again. Every single time I'm about to speak, there is a catch in my heart, like I can't do this, yeah. but God always works me th- or pushes me through yeah. that. Now, I'll say this, mm-hmm. and I am not putting on at all. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this since 2005, sir. So you know, about, what, 17 years, 16, 17 years? Something like that. And so, um, but but still, every time I'm going to do sidewalk outreach, wherever it's at, but even down Latrobe Drive, I've been down this drive to come and do sidewalk outreach. Thousands. Thousands. I, yeah. I cannot count how many times. Right. Every time I come down this road, there's a nervousness. Yep. There's a, there's a lack of courage. Yeah. Now, what I do, and it's by God's grace, I call out to the Lord and I say, God, in humility, I need your grace. I'm submitting right now to your grace. Mm -hmm. He gives me grace to push through it. Mm -hmm. But it's not like there's not fear there. Every time I grab the microphone to proclaim the truth on the microphone or every time I lift up my voice to call out across the parking lot or every time I approach someone that's walking up the sidewalk to the abortion center and hand them a brochure, there's a certain level of fear in me. Yep, me too. I don't know that that's ever going to go away. Yeah. Right? It hasn't gone away in 17 years. Right. I don't know that it's ever going to go away. And you know what? I don't think I want it to. Yeah. Because it, it helps me to acknowledge that I need God. Once I start to become mm-hmm. confident, and I do have a level of confidence. I'm not saying we shouldn't have confidence. We should. Right? Our experiences can give us confidence. Right? But if I'm fully confident in my ability, I think that could be a problem. Right? Right? I'm confident in what the Lord has taught me. And I know that I need to lean on his confidence and his strengths, right? I need him to put courage in me to help me push past um, my lack of courage, right? And like you said, yeah. courage is not the absence of fear. Right. It's the willingness to do what you're supposed to do, even in the presence of fear, right? right. right. You can imagine David before Goliath, do you think, I mean, he looks like he's pretty a, pretty a confident guy in that scripture. 
But it's hard to imagine that he wasn't at all afraid. He certainly was, right? But he had confidence in what he had, what the Lord had done through him. He killed the lion and the bear in the past because the Lord gave him strength. His confidence was not in his own strength and not even just in his past experiences. His confidence was in the Lord because he says, I know that the Lord will deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hands. So our confidence has to be in the Lord and the Lord by his grace can help us push past Our lack of confidence. Yeah, and that leads really beautifully to the last line in in the poem or in the prayer, and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, and and sometimes it is hard. There are gray areas sometimes where it is hard. Can I affect change here or not? Yeah, and um, and you need to wrestle through those gray areas. Pray to God for discernment. But um, but we do we need to know that we we need to let go of those we can't change and move on. Yeah. Like whether the pro-abortion crowd comes up and interrupts a discussion, we can't change it. But what we can change is that we can continue to speak boldly about what God has called us to speak at that moment. So um, uh, so wisdom, where does that wisdom come from? And of course, I know. You know where that wisdom yeah, comes. Yeah, it comes from the Lord. Yeah, and the Bible tells us. You guys well know this scripture, Proverbs one verse seven: "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That word knowledge right, can be right. also yes. wisdom. Yes, we have to fear the Lord. Our yeah. hearts have to be. This is for God. Like what we're doing is because we fear, and it's not we're afraid of God. We reverence God. We've always said the focus for our sidewalk outreach has to be a love for God, yeah. a reverence for God first. And then God will give us wisdom. He'll give us wisdom to discern between what are the things we cannot change and what are the things that we can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think also the Lord gives us other people in our lives. He True. gives us a team. And so sometimes maybe you need like that um, new counselor. Yeah. You kind of gave some correction and some some encouragement there to her. Yep. We need each other because mm-hmm. God in his wisdom has given us each other as a team, as the body of Christ, to encourage and to help each other to sort through what what are the things that you can change and what are the things that you cannot? And how do you take courage from even pushing past the things that you cannot change? Right, right. And so, yeah, I think the the Word of God gives us a lot of, uh, kind of coincides, I guess, with this serenity prayer. It It gives us a lot of fuel to to believe that these are some principles that I think God's word would have us to apply in our sidewalk outreach. Yeah. So this this morning I was reading in Revelation. um, I think it was in Revelation. Maybe it was, um, I'm pretty sure it was, but it, it talked about the prayers of the saints being collected in a gold bowl. Yeah. And, um, in other words, the our prayers are are so valuable that they're being collected. So they're they're not ignored. They're not lost. They're being collected yeah. in gold in a gold bowl, and my keychain is gold. Okay, and and with the prayers on it, and and I named the keychain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I name a lot of my inanimate okay. what, what's friends. What's her name but, uh, or his name? Her name. It's a her. Her name. <laughs> of course. Her name is Goldie. Okay. And I just thought that that was interesting. As I was reading that, I was thinking, hmm, my <laughs> my gold keychain with the prayer hands. And God is hearing our prayers. Yeah. God is hearing our prayers. And I th- this is our last podcast for the year. And, and, you know, we it's so good, I think, to end with something that's encouraging. Yeah. I hope that this really is an encouragement. But um, but to, I really believe this is one of the most important things that we do need to keep in our yeah. heart and our and our mind that first of all this is God's work and um if we keep our focus on him bottom line that's what that that serenity prayer is saying yeah put your focus where it belongs on yeah. God he is the one that grants us peace he's the one that gives us wisdom he's the one that helps us to discern what we can and can't change and if our focus is not on all those obstacles and fears and horrible things that are always going to exist this side of heaven. Yeah. If our focus instead is on him, we will have serenity yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, guys, we hope that this was an encouragement to you. And uh, we do want to wish you guys a happy new year. And we're looking forward to hearing what the Lord is going to do through you guys in 2023. 
For all you guys that serve under Love Life, just want you to know that we appreciate you, appreciate the way that you serve, and uh, we know that you serve as unto the Lord, and we thank mm-hmm. you for that. It's a very, um, very powerful encouragement to us to know that people are serving, laboring across the nation under the banner of Love Life for the, for the glory of Jesus. It is. Um, as I said at the beginning, we want to leave you guys our um, email addresses. So you can reach out to me, Daniel at lovelife.org. You can reach her, Vicky at lovelife.org. We'd love to hear from you. Any ways that we can encourage you, again, any subjects that we can cover, episodes that we can do that would cover subjects that interest you, we'd love to hear from you. And again, Happy New Year, and God bless you guys. Happy New Year, everyone. God bless you. Give me an outlet for gratitude I know it will cost me my life Nothing's too precious since I met you